Welcome to Endless Learning Training Series The Membrane-Based Desalination Technology. In this video, we will study about seawater RO membrane autopsies. Seawater RO membrane autopsies. Why conduct an autopsy? When to do a membrane autopsy? How is a membrane autopsy done? What analysis included in membrane autospy? Why conduct an autopsy? To identify scaling or fouling problems, to identify chemical and mechanical damage, to determine mechanism as to how the membrane failed, to determine the proper cleaning regimen, to improve system performance, identify the cause of poor membrane performance. When to do a membrane autopsy? Most cases, a membrane autopsy is only performed when a membrane is failing or underperforming. A noticeable loss in flow, permeate quality or visible fouling on the membrane itself would indicate a problem with the element and the need to have it inspected. If not controlled, fouling and scaling will lead to higher operational costs that could result in higher energy demand, increased cleanings, and reduced lifetime of the membrane elements. Chemical attack and physical to the membrane surface result in irreversible loss of performance. Identifying the problem at an early stage can help to save huge cost in membranes before excessive damage renders them useless. How is a membrane autopsy done? A membrane autopsy includes specific tests on membranes. Each test provides specific scientific data to identify and quantify fouling slash scaling or chemical slash mechanical damage. The results of the different tests are then compiled by experienced chemists and engineers to draw a conclusion. Most common failure due to foulance and scalance are found. The first element from the SWRO first pass should be chosen for autopsy, although best characterization of plant status would be obtained by autopsying elements from both the first and last positions of the pressure vessel. What analysis included in membrane autospy? Visual inspection of external and internal membrane components, inorganic characterization of fouling deposits, integrity test, organic characterization, scanning electron microscopy, SEM, with energy dispersive X-ray analysis, oxidative or halide membrane damage via Fujiwara testing, Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometry, FTIR, X-ray Diffraction, XRD, Atomic Force Microscopy, AFM. Integrity Test, to determine if a membrane performance problem is possibly caused by any mechanical structural damages, e.g. tears, delamination, broken components are present within the RO membrane. Damage membranes are tested to check for vacuum decay that may indicate abnormal bypass. Integrity test in this test a vacuum of about 22 inches mercury in Hg is applied to the permeate side of the membrane for a duration of 120 seconds. If over 35% of the vacuum is lost within a 120 second period, then the membrane can be said to have severe physical damage. Element weight test. Element weight is often indicative of the degree of fouling Elements are weighed prior to the autopsy. 
Sample element. SN hashtag weighed 34 pounds. New 8-inch elements weighed approximately 30 to 35 pounds. RO membrane wet test. Element is wet tested to gain insight on overall performance parameters, the permeate product flux, overall rejection and differential pressures are obtained and compared to the manufacturer's published specifications. Wet test results were normalized to the manufacturer's published test conditions. Sample test report is below. Exterior inspection. Exterior inspection of membrane elements examines for physical damage or defects in O-rings and brine seals, anti-telescoping device, ATD, for channeling and colloidal debris. Feed spacer being forced out may also be an indication of the fouling level. Internal inspection. This is a destructive technique to examine the inside of the membrane. The key is to identify the foul ant and then take the proper steps to treat the cause. Envelopes and feed spacers are inspected for the extent and pattern of fouling, channeling, and ungluing. Deposit analysis during the internal inspection. Sample of the foulants are collected for analyses. Loss on ignition, LOI, determines the amount of organic versus inorganic material in the sample. X-ray fluorescence, XRF, is used to identify the inorganic material remaining following the LOI. Scanning electron microscopy, SEM with energy dispersive X-ray analysis, EDX, is used to provide photographs of the foulant layer and to detect the spatial distribution of elements in a foulant layer of the membrane. Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, FTIR, can be used to further analyze organic material. Once a sample is scanned, it is matched using a vast library to determine its composition. Fujiwara test. This test is used to determine whether the membrane surface has been exposed to an oxidizing halogen, such as chlorine or bromine. Example of negative photo on the left and positive photo on the right. Fujiwara color change. Dry test. A dye test is performed to detect any physical defects or deterioration of the membrane surface. Areas of damage show the dye to soak through to the permeate side of the membrane. Cell test and cleaning study. Cell testing is used to determine the performance of removed membrane samples based on the RO manufacturer's standard test condition. It is also useful in the optimization of membrane cleaning procedures to improve overall element performance. iMicrobiological Analysis this analysis determines the biological activity of the sample, which includes total bacteria count, TBC, slime-forming bacteria, sulfate-reducing bacteria, and iron-related bacteria, etc. The diversity of a biofilm can be a good indication of its maturity. Seawater RO membrane autopsies, membrane sample, feed, left, and concentrate, right, scroll ends of sample element, SN, hashtag 58024XXXX. Thank you for watching this video.